for many people, buying a lake house is a dream. I know it was for me. I bought my very first house was a lake house. It was a disaster <laughs> and it had a weird floor plan, but I redid it all. I can honestly say it's been the best decision I've ever made, but it came with a lot of negatives that we're going to talk about now because if you're thinking of doing this, you need to know up front. The benefits of living in a lake home are innumerable. Besides having an abundance of wildlife, gorgeous scenery, different sunlight patterns on the lake, different reflections, and just overall beauty by living on a lakefront home, you also have the recreational aspect. Depending on which lake you live on, it will offer you swimming, boating, fishing, all kinds of activity. It's a complete lifestyle. It's not just buying a house. When you go looking for a lake house, you're buying a lifestyle. And I think a lot of people don't understand that. Normal house does not offer you a vacation lifestyle. It's a completely different life, one that you will love and one that is well worth the price tag. So let's dive into the 10 things you really need to know before buying a lake house. First thing you need to know when you are considering buying a lake house is to adjust your expectations. Stop looking at lake houses with the same expectation that you're going to get what you would in a normal house. One of the first things you're gonna notice when you go lake shopping is the bigger and better the lake, the more expensive the home is going to be. Bottom line is there is no inexpensive lake house. If you're going out shopping, you need to have that expectation. You're not gonna get a deal on a lake house. I can't even tell you how many times buyers will come to me and say, well, I'll buy it if I get a good deal. There are no good deals on lake homes because everybody wants one. And if you want it, you have to pay for it. There are a lot of limitations for what you get for that money. And you have to be willing to make sacrifices with the house you purchase because you're not going to get as much house as you would with a conventional house that is not waterfront. Pretty much every waterfront home is on a tiny piece of land, especially in Massachusetts, where they squeeze them in with 50 feet of frontage. There are a lot of lots in my area that are like 50 by 150 or 175, or they're really, really skinny. So you're very close to your neighbors. There's not a lot of privacy. And that was one of the main reasons I left my first waterfront home that I bought. I loved it. It was close to the water. It was awesome but I was so close to my neighbors and I didn't like it so I traded up I made a lot of money off that lakefront house and you will make money off lake homes because they're always in demand I ended up selling and buying my second lakefront home third thing you really need to know about buying a lakefront house is that the majority of lakefront homes are going to have an awkward floor plan especially anything under 600,000 in Massachusetts you're going to get really weird rooms. <laughs> the first house that I bought, the floor plan was good, but we needed more space. So we built an addition, but the land was so narrow that the town would not allow us to go on the sides to build. We could only go in one direction and that created an even more awkward floor plan. And when we were trying to sell that house, it was a common complaint amongst buyers. Well, the floor plan is so strange. It's like, yes, it is <laughs> like that's pretty much what you're going to get on the lakefront house because the lots are tiny if you want to avoid an awkward layout you have to pay more money a lot more money like at least a hundred or two hundred thousand more to get like a normal layout and even then it's still difficult the majority of homes lakefront homes that i show and sell have an awkward home layout fourth thing you want to be aware of if you're going to buy a lakefront home is that there are a lot of lakefront homes in Massachusetts that are on dirt roads. Now that doesn't mean the town doesn't maintain it, but you need to know this. You need to make sure you ask your realtor, you know, is this lake private? What kind of plowing happens? What kind of 
road maintenance happens. You know, I know on the first house I lived on, they plowed the street, but they did not fill in the potholes. That was the responsibility of everyone on the street. These are things you want to know before you buy the house. Fifth thing you need to know when you're buying a lake house in Massachusetts are the environmental concerns. You can't just go out and one, cut trees, that are in front of the lake. You cannot do that. Also, I know, you know, I wanted to put sand at my beach on my last house and no, nope, can't do that. That's not allowed because the sand may have chemicals in it that can affect the water. So these are all environmental concern. We couldn't even use lawn fertilizer because lawn fertilizer kills the fish and the wildlife. Another thing you want to be if aware of for every single lake has different rules and regulations as to the water boat usage. Some allow any water boat. Some have limitations on whether it allows motorboats and what, what size motorboat. Certainly don't want to go buy a house and find out you can't put a pontoon boat on it if that was the whole reason that you were buying the house, you know? <laughs> you love having a garage because if you do, and it's a must, Finding one on a lakefront house in Massachusetts is not going to be easy. Lakefront lots are so small that they often cannot accommodate a garage. So people tend to either choose a larger house or the garage and you kind of have to pick and choose and the majority of people want the larger living space as opposed to the garage. So it is not going to be an easy task to find a garage unless you're looking at six seven hundred thousand dollar price range in massachusetts something you may not have realized is that lake homes in massachusetts a lot of times because they're on this small lot they don't always have a traditional septic system like you would find in a house in the suburbs of central mass very rarely do they have town water and sewer because they're kind of in hard to reach areas out of the way and make it harder to get town utilities there. These are extra costs you want to evaluate and understand before you purchase. You may not be able to make altered changes that you'd like to on a lake house. Town regulations as far as how much house can be on the plot of land. There's a percentage and I know this because we did build an addition on our first house and we were subject to certain regulations from the town as far as how big of an addition we were able to build. So yes, there are challenges, yes, there are disadvantages, but the joy living on a lake will bring you is immeasurable. I've lived in my lakefront home for 23 years. I've helped many people buy lakefront homes and sell lakefront properties. I am a lakefront specialist, so if you are thinking of buying or selling a lakefront property in central Massachusetts, please reach out to me for help. I can give you very good guidance to get you where you want to go. Check me out on Instagram and TikTok. My next video in two weeks, I'm going to be talking to you about Holden, Massachusetts. We'll go on a little bit of a driving tour, get a feel for it, and see if it is a town you'd like to live in. Thanks for being here.